Welcome back everyone. Thanks for watching and a big shout out to Mick O'Toole in Dublin, Ireland. What person in Dublin, Ireland is going to sit there and watch us on YouTube in Sebastian, Florida here working on jet skis? Uh, I just, thanks for the shout out for Dublin, Ireland, Mick, and thanks for watching, man. I appreciate it. We appreciate all you guys watching. This is not my first YouTube adventure. I got like 60 something thousand subscribers on the other one, but it's a whole different topic, man. It's very like kind of professional. This is pretty much, you know, hit the fireball and build these things and hope they last, you know? So I really appreciate it. This really means a lot. I started this, what, two and a half years ago with some old ratty GTX I got burned on and uh, look where we are. So. I have something here that I found online that I had to buy. And July 28th is the Florida Ski Riders event at the Monster Hole in Sebastian Inlet. I'm just just nuts thinking about this. I, I so want to go out there and go see a bunch of video. We got Chris out there on his XP. His is finished. Mine's finished. We got uh, Almondo and his boy from West Palm where we got the XP. They're coming up too. So it's just going to be a riot. So of course me, I can't settle for anything that's finished. I had to find something else online to give me just a little bit more. And we're going to see what this does. What I'm going to do is show you what this is. And when it gets done raining, I'm going to get outside and put it on. And then i got to find a time between now and Sunday to go out there and test it in the water. This is from Wet Wolf Technologies. I paid $169 for it. And this is what they call the Adjusta Thrust. Okay. My Sea-Doo 720 SP Death Trap has disgusting amount of power and I'm surprised I have not blown it up with that factory pipe and those dual 44 carbs and I got a Solos 1724 prop on there, a works intake grate and I got so much power that at about just over three quarters throttle, about 50 something miles an hour, it's hitting the rev limiter and I kept going up and up on props and, and I'm thinking there's even a couple guys at Impros and stuff told me there's no way you're maxing out that prop, a 1724 X prop. They said it took us thousands of dollars to build a motor to turn something like that. So he said, you really got something wrong. So then I went back and went to the carbon ring, went through the pump again, something's wrong. Then it clicked. I said, maybe it's my actual outlet of my pump or my steering nozzle, or maybe the size of it. And then I started Googling online and I found this, the adjust a thrust from Wet Wolf technology. So I had to buy it. And I'm going to show you what this is. Okay. We're going to go through, show you what comes with it. I'm going to set it up and when it gets done raining, we'll uh, have to take it out, set it up when it gets done raining and then take it out in the water to see what happens. So in this box, I have a full list of tuning instructions. I'm going to make this easy for you if you're interested, because I'll tell you basically the principle and idea behind this, what comes with it. And uh, then when we're out in the water, we'll see how easy it is uh, to tune. So on my pump, I have a standard anti-rattle nose cone from like eBay, right? Just some crappy old whatever. And that thing's long, but here is what the adjust the thrust consists of, okay? This is first the nose cone, and this is going to replace your anti-rattle or whatever nose cone you got on there. This is uh, his design, I guess it's really, really nicely machined, uh, CNC machined, I guess. And it looks oddly different than what you're used to, right? You're like, wow, that's, that's weird. Okay, so there's the cone, right? That's gonna go on and the idea, let me show you the idea behind this and then we'll, we'll get to what, what it comes with. The idea behind this is that there's different shuttles. They make these, I guess these are ABS or Delrin uh, molded plastic. They're really nice looking. They're called shuttles. And these shuttles are going to go in here fastened with a bolt through here and a spring under spring tension. And what happens is at low RPM or low speed or low thrust, your, your cone is going to be in, okay? Now that, if you think of the output of the hole here, when the cone is in, you're going to have more of an output on your venturi or your uh, steering nozzle or whatever. Now, as you give it thrust and you get thrust moving through that pump, the cone is going to come out. And when the cone comes out, it's going to start closing the hole towards your, your exit, reducing the size essentially, and giving you more top end thrust. And then when you let off the gas and slow down, it's going to go right back in. It's kind of like a CVT transmission for a vehicle, all right, or a, a shifting, you know. A lot of people don't want to, they always say in the, in the CD world, I want to have more top speed, but I don't want to lose my low end, and that's me, right, because I don't want to give up that, I mean, the thing just flips over when I stab it, but I'm out of top end. So I'm thinking it's not a prop anymore. I'm beyond that. 
I'm thinking it's something to do with my exit size. And then trying to find R&D nozzles with adjustable rings and stuff was really hard. I can't find one yet. When they, when they show up, they're gone. So this right here, it comes with several nozzles and they have other ones available. Here's the tallest one, okay, the longest one. And I'm gonna show you, that goes in with the screw through here, but look how long that is right there. And then as you accelerate or thrust, it's gonna come out, okay? That's a lot longer. That's gonna start covering some of the hole of your exit and it's going to give you a reduced size uh, along with the form of the thrust coming out. He said, I've been making these since the late 90s, and if they didn't work, I would have never kept making them this long, and that's, that's a valid point. But how come I can't get anybody on the forums to tell me how this works? I look on the forums and I research this, and people from 2007 and 2005 and 2013, they say, yeah, I got one of those. It's coming on the way. I'll let you know how it is, and nothing. Okay, did it not work? Was it a piece of shit? I don't know. I think this is a really brilliant idea, but we're going to test this out and we're going to see if it works. Now, uh, in the, the idea behind this is it takes you just, what, 30 minutes to put this on. And once you put this on, you put your steering nozzle back in. That's it. You don't have to take the steering nozzle out to try different shuttles because it comes with this long Allen tool. I used to use something like this at AT&T. And you could basically get in there and, and take that thing out with the steering nozzle on in the water. So I don't have to take it on and off out of the water and do all that stuff. Okay, and with this, so what did I get? I got three nozzles, or three uh, shuttles rather. One, two, three. Show you the sizes here. So like a small, a medium one. Because he said, you know, it depends. Every, every ski is different. Every ski's got a different amount of horsepower. Every ski's got a different hull. So this one may react different for you. And, you know, um, it may work. Maybe it doesn't work on mine, but it works on yours. I'm not sure. So we have three, and he said if you need a longer nozzle or a shuttle, they can make one. So I might keep that into consideration as well. So you're going to have a plug in here for your oil like you normally do, right? And that's going to go in here. But what you're looking at in there is it's also got like a built-in anti-rattle cone to it with these little discs, okay? These discs have like a double-sided tape on them. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to peel one off. You put it in, follow the instructions, right? And then you put the, just put this on and turn it a little bit and see if the shaft is touching that disc. And if it's not, you take it out and you throw another one in and another one until that shaft is just butted up to that and it'll cut its way into these discs. But at that point, you're not gonna have travel back and forth. And that's pretty much what the anti-rattle cone does is it has spring tension that keeps that thing pushing forward. But mine, still rattles, you know, maybe this won't rattle at all. And we also have, see, this is the hardware to it. So let's see if I can get this without dropping it all. Okay, so see, there's a spring, right? And there should be a washer in here. I should have been more prepared. Okay, so get a washer like this. So the bolt is going to go like this with the washer. That's gonna go through the spring like this. And then that's gonna go through a cone like that, okay? And it does give you, there's a little bit of tension to get that spring and that bolt pushed through that hole to where it'll screw into the inside of this nose cone, you see? And then basically the spring tension keeps that cone like this and the cone will move up and down, you know, with the thrust once you get it bolted in. That's the idea behind it. Hopefully you understand that, okay? Um, so in the instructions, he's got some things in here about, you know, uh, you have to use your stock bolts and O-ring for this. Put some Loctite or silicone or something around here. So at this time, you're changing the oil in your pump. You're gonna put this on with the screw facing up, of course, right? And notice there's another hole on the bottom, and that's probably for water to get up in the front to cool uh, the parts and lubricate, keep the parts moving because you don't want to have this shuttle dry in there, okay? Um, that's going to keep basically water flowing in there without getting into your pump. So stock O-ring, um, I, I do notice yellow Loctite for that bolt that goes in once you get it to where you know which cone you want. You know, some of these cones, one of these may, the way you tune this is what it says in here is you start with a cone that may be almost the biggest, and you take her for a ride, make sure she's warmed up, make sure your ski's running right, your wear ring is right and all that. 
you take it for a ride and you judge it. For me, I'm gonna look for no more rev limiter. I wanna see this thing where I can stab it and it stays full throttle without bouncing off the rev limiter. If I start flooring it and it's and it's really, if this thing's really bogging down, I'm gonna go to a smaller cone. If it doesn't have any difference, I'm gonna go to a larger cone. If it does nothing for you at all, then maybe you could talk to him and find out maybe you need a longer cone. But chances are you don't have as much horsepower as I do in this SP because I've replaced almost everything. I'm not saying yours is not better. I'm just saying the average person is looking for their XP 800 or 720. Give them a little more speed or some kind of mod like this without having to drop $1,500 into it like I did. So um, yeah, if, if uh, in fact it says, if the RPM, let's see. If you don't lose RPM, install a longer shuttle and ride again. Keep trying longer shuttles until you start losing too much RPM or stop gaining high speed or top speed. Once you hit that point, go back up one. So you, you don't want this thing to bog where you start detonating and, and overheating that motor, but you want to get it to where you're putting more of that uh, over revving I have into water flow. That's what I need to do. So let's check out this adjust a thrust. The instructions that come with it are pretty detailed. It's pretty easy to understand. It stuff's on uh, the internet as well for the instructions so you can check those out. The links are in the description. And uh, let's put this on and see what it looks like. And then when I take it out in the water, like I said, I could get right into there through the steering nozzle, take one off, put a different cone on and, and adjust it. Adjust a thrust. Okay, so see, I, you're supposed to take this off you know, take your steering nozzle off. I just kind of laid it there. Don't break it. There's my stock cone. What a piece of crap that is. Look, the, the, the plug's rusting. I mean, come on. That's probably where my water's getting in or right there. Anyways, take the three, should be eight millimeter for sea dew. Take these three out and then have something to catch the oil that falls down. Drain that out and uh, it's a good time to change the oil while you're putting this on. Yeah, and the scariest thing is when you take your cone off and no oil comes out. Unbelievable. It was full of water. And look, this stupid Chinese eBay. Tell me if you could tell me what the problem is there. Let's take a good look. Why doesn't this seal? It's because it's all like squared. It, it like warped as I tightened it on. You see, it's not a circle. Piece of crap. Anyways, so now we're gonna do is uh, I'm going to put uh, the cone on, the adjust the thrust cone and see if it touches, if this shaft touches the inside. If not, I'll add a couple of those little plates. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and lose those screws in the grass over here so you never find them again. That's what I do. Uh, so I had to find some other screws and no seams out here. You see these little tiny bugs? This is what you guys are missing when you don't live in Florida. No seams. You can barely, see, you can see them on camera now, but you can't see them when they're biting the hell out of you. No seams suck. So I needed two of those little pads I put two of those pads and, and it's on there now with the stock O-ring with silicone. Nice tight seal here. So hopefully next time I take my nose cone off, I don't have uh, water in there, which is what you pretty much saw me take out. Uh, the next thing is I'm going to put on the cone that I want with the spring and the stopper and all that and get that screwed in. I'm not going to lock tight it in yet because I want to make sure. Wow, these freaking bugs. It just got done raining too. That's when they come out. I want to make sure that I got the right cone in before I Loctite it or else it's going to be a pain to get it out. Okay, so I got that on and do not, it says in the instructions, do not tighten that more than seven foot pounds on the inside. You will snap that bolt off. Um, once you Loctite it in there, it ain't going nowhere. Now's a good time to go ahead and put your filler plug in and put oil in before you forget, like I almost did. Then uh, you'll be running with nothing in there. It'll be salt water lubricated. But with that spring in there, now, <clears throat> it's hard. Yeah. See, I could pull it, that spring is stiff, but that's because, um, you know, there's a lot of thrust in there. See, if you have the little cone on, right, you use the little screw. That way you don't have to try to put it so far in there. And also there's a couple extra washers. Here's my fill plug, I'll go ahead and put that in now. And one thing to mention before I go putting this back together, read the instructions, always, because this is not what they just to pack in there. This is actually, this is funny, this is in here. This is actually a self-absorbing cloth that it comes with a template on these instructions, right? See on the back here? You cut that out. It's a absorbent mat that can be used to soak up accidental fuel spills. And what I'm gonna use this for 
is when we're out there Sunday, we're not gonna have enough fuel. I'm gonna have to come back to the dock and fill up. But this will open up, I'll cut it, you know, cut a hole in there, open it up and put that around my gas tank. That way when I'm putting gas in the thing, if any leaks out down the hole, it's not going in the water, it absorbs on here. So they, they I mean, they use this more than just packing. You gotta read the instructions. That's pretty neat though. I could use that when uh, I want to fill my thing up this Sunday. Okay, so you can see it inside there. All right, and uh, notice I don't have any baler tubes. That's called a baler delete. I lost it, so I use a, I sealed it up and uh, put a um, bilge pump in there. But make sure when you put this back on that you got your O-rings in here for your balers. I don't have those on. Anyways, there it is inside. You see that? And if I turn this, I got the cover on it. The cover on it now, but if I turn the handlebars, right, I can get that screw right in there and change a cone in the water. Uh, not too hard to do. We're going to see what the long cone does. And uh, if that's the case, I'll take it home. And if that works good, I get the when I get the right cone on there, I'll bring it home, Loctite it, and make sure it's ready to go. Wow, okay, it does work. So I put the longest cone on first, and it took me right off the lemon, uh, rev limiter, and so now I'm not bouncing off the rev limiter. The thing is, what I didn't tell you in the beginning of the video was I was planning on getting this nozzle here, the Solos 82 or 83, 85 millimeter nozzle. Um, so that was a big upgrade then, but still I put that nozzle on yesterday and uh, tried it out and it was still bounced on a rev limiter. Um, so then, I put the longest cone in because I, I started with the longest cone, then I put the shortest one in. So now I have the longest one in. You saw it's not wide, it's not rev limiter. I'm gonna drop it down one size. And all I have to do is go in there, take it out, and put this one in. Now it should bring me up a couple hundred RPM. We'll see what happens. All right, so with that tool, 15 seconds in the water. You pretty much get right in there, hold the screw with your finger. 15 seconds to change this. So we're gonna try the middle size cone, see what happens.
say yes the medium cone on this thing i get like 150 more rpm just under the rev limiter but i get a little more punch a little more low end so i'm going to leave it there because if i go one more step down i'm going to have more low end but i'm going to lose that top end i'm going to start hitting the rev limiter again so now with this um smaller prop here or the uh, taller prop smaller nozzle here uh the adjusted thrust i could hold this thing and uh but check it out guys look what you didn't see look what you didn't see oh my god look at that <laughs> we are running the buckshot that's right we're at uh, 175 psi on this thing and i got about 102 octane in here uh, so serious power okay of course salt water you gotta rinse stuff off but check it out guys it did work there's the other cones i brought okay um i have the middle to shortest in there and uh really easy to do this in the water like i said see this is my solos nozzle here that i put on there's the cone inside you just reach right in um a couple things to note one when i started this video um it came aware to me that i really need to get a smaller nozzle here and that was one of my holdups was the big stock nozzle didn't have enough thrust that's why like group k and all of them they use 8285 this is an 8385 so this 85 millimeter nozzle uh you know steering nozzle 83 millimeter on the inside uh venturi and what a difference that made so my goal now because i have the 1724X prop in there. I did bolt on the buckshot head. We're at about 175 PSI. I have about 102 roughly octane in there. Did not detonate one once, did not ping. Ran great. What a super strong, powerful head. That head came off eBay. It's too bad you didn't buy it when I had it on there because everybody wanted to bitch that $150 was too much. Now I see why they're so expensive and rare. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what we're looking at right now. Factory performance pipe, pipe, electronic water controlled injection, electronic controlled water injection, rather. Buckshot head, um, 36 cc domes in there. And the compression I had was like 130. So it brought it up 45 points. Um, so I guess if you were at 160, it'd be over 200. So that's probably why it's working for me. Um, dual 44 millimeter of the Ocean Pro air filters on a West Coast racing intake. Um, got the, uh, you know, the uh, works intake grate, the Solos jet pump, or Solos nozzle there, the Solos 1724X prop, and uh, the Wet Wolf cone. I say it works. I mean, it really does. I hope the video that I captured on my uh, head cam showed the, the two. Uh, sometimes the audio craps out, and uh, I don't know it until I'm done riding. But anyways, I have... The middle cone on and that seems to get me right to max rpm without bumping that rev limiter when i had this one on this is the longest it was about 150 rpm lower than max and this one here was the shortest one and this one serious hole shot but it was just tacking out so it does actually work but it works with a smaller nozzle um, when i tried this when i started the video on my stock nozzle didn't do so well didn't do anything this was the key right here so i was clocked today at about 56 miles an hour and that's because i'm not turning enough rpm for some reason uh, i'm not even hitting 7,000 uh, with the rev limiter so something's wrong with that micro touch or it's set low or something i need to be turning about 7,500 rpm and uh, that's what i thought the micro touch was going to do but i guess i have an issue with that thing we're going to find out thanks to clots again i'm going to show you a video of all that stuff that we got man that is the reason i have not blown this motor yet is clots and that will continue to be the reason that i have high octane with their octane booster and uh their quality oil i mean it's just ridiculous the stuff they really are i mean go look at the reviews don't listen to me go look at reviews on clots you're going to be amazed when you see it's all five stars ain't nobody says anything bad about clots anyways thanks for watching the wet wolf industries adjust the thrust cone is um, a valuable part and i'm glad i have it in there so when chris gets one or one day al mondo gets one we'll have to try it out again thanks for watching guys and check out the link in the description for the wet wolf cone or the wet wolf adjust a thrust.